I, I want to do an update on an, an interview we did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we spoke to the producer and director of River of Freedom. That is a documentary film uh, about the parliament, well, anti-mandate, protest, parliament, occupation, whatever you want to call it. Um, and independently produced and funded, unlike um, the Fire and Fury documentary or propaganda doc film made by Paula Penfold and stuff that was, of course, funded by you, the tax player, which painted, of course, the protesters as Nazis and white supremacists who are all going to kill politicians, which justifies hate speech laws and uh, the continuing um, uh, suppression of free, free political thought in this country. Um, we had uh, the director and the producer on. I predicted, somewhat arrogantly, I must admit, that I thought they'd do really well by coming on the platform and they'd get the project a little further down the road or up the river, uh, perhaps, would be better. So to find out how um, the River of Freedom is going, we are joined actually in the studio, which is a real pleasure, by um, the film's director, Gailene Barnes. Gailene, lovely to have you with us. Thank you, Sean. It's wonderful to be here. All right, so how did it go after we had our chat the other day? Did that have an effect? Yes, it did, and I'm glad you've asked that question. Yeah. Uh, that interview that we had, it pretty much doubled our exposure. Wow. Yeah, and, um, and it increased the fundraising. Now, are you looking for 180 grand? How far are you down the road now? Uh, we're heading towards 50%. Wow. Yeah, so we've had um, 975 supporters on the Buy Me A Coffee platform. Fantastic. People have been donating anywhere from $5, which we love because it's Every little bit counts, yeah. And up to 50 mainly, and some people have put in up to 500 Yeah. You know, people really want to see this film. I've got to say, the feedback I got when people went and looked at that 10-minute sort of teaser you made, mm. particularly in the context of comparing it with Fire and Fury, it was a well-made piece. Uh, it was a well-made teaser it was documentary in, in its purest form and everything else. Have you been, been getting lots of views on that and lots of reaction to that? Yeah, um, people are definitely saying that it's um, well made, it's professional and they're feeling confident to support it, knowing that their voices will be heard and, and listened to and put together in a, um, a real way, you know, in terms of yeah. a, a yeah. feature well, documentary. Well, that's the boring part, that's the money. Um, what about the actual post-production and putting the thing together? Have you made much progress in the last couple of weeks? How that, how's that going? Uh, we've got a team of um, three editors across the country and we're sharing a team project, so we're all working on different elements. Yeah. Um, yes, and we've also just been on a roadie to either actually gather some more interviews. We're quite um, keen to uh, make sure the voice is balanced mm. and once again based on your survey you know 30% mm. Māori were there so we're making sure we're getting those voices which were diverse in the, in, at the parliament and also um, the Christian voice and the young disenfranchised adult so we, you know we've interviewed um, Not My Auntie up in Tauranga mm. and, um, and we also wanted to get some more legal context as well so we've interviewed a lawyer and and a Pacific Islander in Auckland who was there. Small percentage there, but very significant, so. All, all right, um, just move slightly closer to that microphone because we, we don't use the studio this often and we're still figuring out the technicalities of it. I was wondering um, whether or not the end of mandates, and funnily enough, next Monday, which is meant to be the Queen's Death Day holiday, is also the day that all the emergency powers lift and are not renewed around COVID, We've got rid of the mask, the mandates will go on that day. Is there any danger that that takes, if you like, the heat, the currency, the focus away from River of Freedom, away from your movie, that it suddenly becomes an historical document rather than a contemporary commentary? Uh, it is a historic document. So, okay. um, of course, it's not going to take away from that. Um, in terms of the contemporary angle, um, one interview we haven't done yet is with a teacher and she will say that it has made no difference to the teachers. They're still not able to get their jobs back. So they're not allowed to go back and get their jobs back even though the mandates are gone? Yeah, most of them are sort of a little bit blacklisted. It's very, very... They will, they will tell you that it's actually quite hard to be dismissed as a teacher and so when you've got that dismissal on your record... Yeah. That is interesting, and I think that's a really interesting downstream effect of this. And, of course, we say we had to take these unusual measures at an unusual time. You would think once the crisis was over, 
there would be an emphasis on getting people damaged by this and, and repairing people's damaged careers and damaged lives because you no longer have the justification of a global pandemic to mm. criticise them or to, to, yeah. uh, I, 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 you know, to do them out of a job. I would have thought that there would be teams in the Ministry of Education saying, how do we rehabilitate the people we had to exclude because we were told to? Uh, well, they're still not listening. Mm. So that's the problem. Yeah. It's not an open dialogue. Yeah. Um, you said you got some, some nice response and, and some big response after our interview. Has anyone come back at you? Are you getting blowback from anyone? Are you getting negativity from any groups or not? No. Wow. I know. I'm quite surprised. No, I'm not yeah. wanting to, no but it's been extremely positive. And um, people just want to be seen and heard. Yeah. I mean, some of the comments, it's... Go through, hard. you've got them written down. I've got good. some comments, uh, you know, on the, um, the YouTube channel, on the Buy Me A Coffee when they donate. Mm. They say things like, you, ha you help me feel proud to be a Kiwi again. Um, it will be great to show how so many different Kiwis felt that this division was not warranted. Ordinary people uniting to be heard. And people need to be seen and heard. It is fundamental to enhancing mana and dignity and social cohesion. So um, that for me is probably the most significant one because that's mm. our job, we're just listening. Mm. Um, and it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think, and I'm sorry, I do make the comparison. I do see them as flip sides of the same mirror in some ways with Fire and Fury, which looked and sought to cull out and isolate people based on generalisations, right? That's, that was the, the thesis, the basis of the state-funded documentary. And it just strikes me that you are not trying to do that. This is about rehabilitation, healing, a bringing together of people, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a completely different philosophy, a far more lifting up yeah. uh, philosophy, if, mm. is, if I may say so. And I'm sure you and I wouldn't agree on everything that went on in views, but the idea is not to hate each other and you find some, some middle ground or some understanding. I also saw people were like offering to compose music for you for the documentary and stuff like that, which I found amazing. Have you had some offers of kind of practical help uh, in terms yeah. of gear and, and labour and stuff? Oh, yeah. Yep, lots of people have come out who are, I didn't ex think would be interested, but yeah, we've been offered gr grading suites, um, uh, some editing uh, definitely lots of music has, have, yeah. have been delivered and we're in conversation with com composers. Great, that is yeah. fantastic. Now, any reaction from the government? Did they come and off, offer you some money and say, what a great idea, we'd like to fund this in the public interest? Well, we haven't approached them, so okay. we, we will... <sighs> Don't. Look, honestly, I struggle with this on the platform all the time. I think it's going to be more trouble than it's worth. It's actually going to cost all that money to make a proposal yeah. to get it to the government. It is such a gravy train, yeah. to be honest. You know, and you've got to spend money to make money. Yeah. And some middle person you know is going to be walking out with a consultant's fee, uh, fee you know. Yeah. You could get Nanaima, he's husband, he's pretty good at this stuff, but being quite well connected. <laughs> all right, so give me a time update now. Now that you've had the platform bump and you've got a bit more money, when is this thing going to be finished? When, we, when, do, when do I get an invite to the premiere? Oh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> Shall we premiere it on Wellington Parliament Lawn? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we're aiming for February, March. Yeah. Next year. That sounds like a nice way to start the year. It um, does. Yep. All right. Um, any major, and obviously you've still got some money to raise, but that will, I suspect, take care of itself. Any other major roadblocks or problems that you need help with and then anyone listening could help you out with? Um. We're really wanting to, um, even if you can just donate $5, it's just to um, to show that you really want to see this film, you know? Yep. And once we get the numbers, then we're able to actually get, make sure that we have enough funding to actually get this film distributed. How long is it going to be, about 90, 90 which minutes? Which actually can cost a lot of money. Well, I think uh, it's an epic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'd do a Peter Jackson three times. Oh, don't, don't, don't. No, no. Look, I'm trying to get it to 90 
minutes, yeah. Okay, all right. But it's going to be in the movie theatres. So it's there's absolutely some going to be a theatrical release. We've got um, sound editors, we've got a beautiful uh, sound mixer, we're going to have surround sound, music. It's it's going to be, yeah. All right, well, let's just reiterate for people if they want to get involved, if they want to give, where do they, uh, A, where do they go and see the, the, the trailer? Uh, so it's on YouTube, uh, Search River of Freedom. Yep. The Buy Me a Coffee slash Freedom Film yep. is the um, website for um, that. And I encourage everyone to just to go and have a look at some of the comments anyway. Oh, yeah, no, look, I was, I was just yeah. thought it was awesome what happened the last time we had yeah. you and it was oh, really nice. We have had people donating, uh, you know, a lot of coffees there. So, uh, so that, yeah, that's a really um, great start. Um, and we have a Facebook page as well. All right. Thank Look, you um, so much. <laughs> it was so nice to see you again. So nice to hear it is going well. Uh, and we look forward to February. Uh, good old knees up uh, in February. I thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, and, and don't forget, folks, you will be able to see this in general release. Um, and I hope I get a sneak preview, to be honest. Uh, that's uh, director Gaylene uh, Barnes. The movie is called The River of Freedom rather than The River of Filth, and it is an independently made documentary looking at the events of the parliamentary occupation and what it was all about in New Zealand. It is not made with your tax dollar. It's made with coffees. Um, and I think it's going to be excellent. Uh, Gaily, thank you for joining us.